Hello everyone and welcome. Welcome to GDN Plays video games, I guess. Per my recent poll where I asked you if you guys would like to see me play a campaign from uh, Total War Warhammer 2. So here I am trying to deliver on exactly that. We are going to do a vanilla Eye of the Vortex campaign. We're gonna play as the Dark Elves. And uh, I am not playing with any mods, if any of you are wondering about that. This is probably not going to be a uh, full playthrough of the campaign, because that would take a few dozen episodes probably. This is more of a test series, so I can see how many people would be interested in this, and if uh, it's worth it for me to make, a, make it a regular thing of sorts. So, here we are, and here we go. I am Tyrion, heir of Anarian. Like I said, I decided to play uh, the Dark Elves, because I've only ever played with Malekith in one campaign. This was right when I bought the game, when it came out. And I never, I never actually finished that campaign either. So, uh, and I wanted to try one of the other leaders. And since uh, I did buy the DLC, the Hag and the Crone, or something like that it was called, but I never got to play it, uh, we're gonna play with the Crone Hellebron. And it is hard, like you see here. And I can't say I'm the best at this game, but I have been a very, very long time fan of Total War, starting with the original Shogun. So we're gonna give it a try. When I play Total War Warhammer, I usually go with uh, Hard and Hard. I find it to be a pretty decent balance of difficulty. And here we go. The world has seen countless murders, but one killing stands above all others. One death that has shaped the world. Malekith, son of Enerion, was betrayed. The elven princes crowned Belshanar as the second Phoenix King. So Malekith brooded and poured his hate into a single cup. Malekith toasted Belshanar, then stepped over his dying body and into the sacred flame of kings. But the fire stripped his flesh, and with a final scream, he hurled himself back from whence he came. His body was taken north, and a suit of armor forged Malekith was reborn. The Witch King. And in his shadow, legions raised. Decades of civil war followed. Then Malekith embarked on the most ruthless of plans. His sorcerers would unbind the magic of the Great Vortex. Created by Kalador Dragon Tamer and his elven mages, the Vortex siphons the winds of magic, keeping the demon tide at bay. Malekith's spell was flung at the Vortex, but Kalador himself broke through the mists of time to deflect the titanic force back at its casters. The Shadowlands were ravaged, sundered, You 
summoned me, your highness. You bring this witch here. She is well versed in law and prophecies. She will betray you, my son, as all have done. She is indebted to me. I have her soul. Step forward, Felicion the Heartkeeper. The comet disrupts the vortex. Whilst it is weak, a prophecy can be fulfilled. Of a king who consumes the heart of Alfwan. My son will take its power and our vengeance. Find the Oracle. She knows what to do. I am willing to serve to earn my soul's release. I don't have exactly a uh, top end PC, so uh, if these loading screens will feel like uh, they're too long in the future, I'm gonna probably edit them out. I stand before you seeking the pleasures of war. Blood will flow, and I shall bathe this ravaged body anew. Something calls to me from across the seas. A weapon of great power that bears the mark of my lord. With it, I will pierce the heart of Ulthwan and seize control of the Vortex. There is beauty in violence, ecstasy in carnage. All that stand before me are mere vermin. They shall feel no mercy as I unleash horror and torment upon them, as with everything in my way. The masters of Nagaroth sit idle in their towers, bar one. Marathi's pets, the treacherous Druki of Grond. For them, pain awaits. For I am the Hag Queen of Harganeth. Let the screams of Death Knight echo across the world. So, here we go. I haven't actually played with uh, with uh, the Hag Queen of Harganeth <laughs> before, so I'm gonna have to learn a bit on what her peculiar traits and abilities are. I see I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna be doing all the tutorial-y stuff because I do know how to play the game, even though even if I haven't played it in uh, some time now. So what do we have? I am Kane's instrument. 
We have the crone, we have Harganef Executioners, Sisters of Slaughter, Bleak Swords, Dread Spears, and Dark Shards. And what do we own? We own one lousy city. Well, it is Harganef and it's a capital, but still. Uh, we have two unique buildings from this place, but it's a long time since until we're gonna be able to build those. For now, I think we, or well, for we need money, but for now we need to upgrade this to be able to make uh, dark shards with shields and swordsman. So we have that and the... Well, I would normally build something from advanced military, but I'm not, my, the city is not level 3 yet. Because uh, you see these uh, basic military buildings, you can then move them in uh, the other smaller towns because they're only level 3. And you can um, use the slots from uh, the capital to build the more advanced stuff because they can advance past level 3. But for now, I think I'll just build, uh, if you say so. How's the public order? Let's check that. Zero. No surprise there. I think I will go with public order instead. Because I remember from when I played with my... When I played my Malekith campaign, public order with the Dark Elves is a pretty damn big issue. They're really, really unruly. Okay, what do we pick from tech? Cheaper basic units. Better income from raiding, which is irrelevant sort of, because I only have one army so far. Or extra growth. I will go with... I will go with cheaper basic units for now. I'm gonna move the hag here. I'm gonna recruit a few more basic units because we are going to attack one of these towns in a couple of turns. One more unit of archers and two more units of dread spears. This is the slave screen. The slaves are a unique mechanic for the dark elves. They can sacrifice slaves to enact rituals and such for benefits. This, I think, it's something new. Oh, shut up already! Maniac. Here we have a death hag. What does this? What does the death hag do? With speed. Blood shall stay. Okay, and that was our first turn. So far, so good. I usually put them on fast forward because I don't want to see what everyone else is moving if they're in my line of sight. So now we have a mission to capture the Gaeon Vale, which is 10 million miles away. Capture Morafi's Mid Lair, ancient city of Quintex. Well, it's gonna be a while, if ever, <laughs> until I'm gonna be able to fulfill that. hand who do we hate most apparently pretty much everyone apart from Nagarov can we have trade with anyone we cannot Okay, then in that case, let us just 
end them, like you said. And since we have a pretty Do considerable advantage, we're going to fight it manually. Because manual battles are more fun. We literally outnumber them 2 to 1, so this should be easy peasy. And we have more advanced units too. So here we go. I also want to take a short look at uh, two of these units. I think the Sisters of Slaughter are new units on this DLC. In typical Dark Elf fashion, they are murdering dominatrixes. Also half naked. And the Harganet Executioners, I know these were in the base game, I think, for the Dark Elves, but I didn't play enough to actually see a lot of them in action. Guess we're gonna see them now. They have murderous mastery. Let there be suffering for all. And infantry armor piercing and armored. They got the best of everything. Can Hellebrand do anything special? She can do Gaze of Cain, which grants leadership and weapon and melee attack. So why not? We will put her at the front. Then we will have the Dread Spears to back her up. And then we will have the Dark Shards right behind the Dread Spears. And this will be Group 1. And then we'll have the anti-infantry stuff and what does defender do pinning down any enemy down in melee Lying time for the rest of your army to get into position that sounds useful we're, we're gonna put them on the flank what's the range they have two units of Dark Shards too, so I will take a few losses, but nothing nothing to be worried about. Murderous Mastery. Well, why not just charge them? You can go there to cut off the retreat, and you can go there, even if those units are supposed to be frontline attackers since they have that defender thing. I hope she's not too squishy. She doesn't have exactly the greatest health pool. Take the Sisters of Slaughter to kill that unit. Dark shards. Murder awaits. Slaughter them. Merciless warriors. Masterless warriors. Moving out. As I said, whip arm dominatrixes. I won't die here. Yes, you will. <laughs> I forgot to use that. Lord of 
Yeah, seems legit. Well, those are gone. You... I don't think they'll be able to catch them. They're not fast enough. Either way, this was a garrison, so even if I don't get them all right now, they die because they have nowhere to retreat. Only 44 losses. I used them with the secondary unit and they still got the most kills. Good for you. Just 400 loot. Not awesome. Okay. And we... We're gonna occupy it, probably. The money isn't worth it. Not to mention the, the public order penalty. Alright, I got uh, the objective done. Got the thousand and scrolls. If you're wondering what scrolls are. Has come early, it seems. Druki attack and dominate my realm in order to seize the scrolls of Hecati. Alright, dear. So if you don't know what scrolls are, the thing with this um, vortex campaign thing is that it's sort of timed and you need to gather a specific resource resource. It's different for each faction, but it kinda does the same thing. You collect this resource, Scrolls of Hakarti, in the case of the Dark Elves, and when you reach this and this and this uh, thresholds, you enact a ritual during which <laughs> some Chaos armies pop up and come to kill you. And if you defeat those, you have to stay, um, have to stay ahead with the ritual. So basically you need to get to the last one first and finish it, and then you basically win the game. The next objective is to control one whole province, and by one whole province, it's yeah this road of skulls thing. We stand to capture the black pillar, and that will need to colonize probably. Priestess to the Druki. Yeah, she does army replenishment, so I think we should put the agent with the uh, Hellebron's army for now. We also have a level for the crone. Now the question is, what do we want to specialize her in? I mean, she is a the bride of Cain, so I would think uh, to make a formidable individual warrior like the the melee path. But this is also important, I think, to get early on the 10% movement extra movement range. So we'll do that I for now. And we will proceed to get one more unit of Dark Shards and two more unit of, units of um, Dread Spears just to have a bigger army. As long as, uh, but at least for as long as we can afford to keep them. And here we have a default building, the Orchard, which gives a wine production and public order. Public order is good. I shouldn't have built that. I should have built money instead, but for now, we'll leave it as it is. I feel I should also let you know that this episode is not going to be very long, because I have some um, space issues on the hard drive. I can't uh, afford to record for very long. But... Uh, this Felicion is no ally of Marath. Yet I should be wary. There is a connection between her and Harganeth I have not unraveled yet. In the meantime... Yeah, basically I have to do a treasure hunt. I have to go with the army there and participate in a sort of choose-your-own-adventure minigame. <laughs> but I can go... I can adapt afterwards. In fact, it's in range, and my army is fully replenished, so let's, let's do it now. Delightful. 
And then next turn we can go conquer that. So as you can see you can colonize but that will take uh, the bulk of my army and I don't want to lose that for now. And we will treasure hunt instead. While scouting the outskirts of a recently ruined settlement, you notice on the edge of town a small, secluded graveyard. The graves look remarkably fresh, considering that the whole place was abandoned in rather a hurry. So what do we do? Now, each of these usually gives either a buff or a debuff of a kind. Sometimes you get, sometimes you get money, sometimes you get extra movement, stuff like that. So let's magically search the graves. And I got a sword of might. Who would have thought? Ah, so this belongs to the Deadwood Sentinels, which have four faith. settlements and they're in this area over here, I assume. But according to this, we are stronger than them, so we can just go and beat the crap out of them. But we are going to do it next turn because it's pointless to declare war and then wait a turn because you can't move anymore. So we're gonna attack the next turn and conquer it straight. Queen Helebron. Your time of murder draws ever near. Soon you must bathe in its glory to restore your luster. Prepare your slaves and make ready for death night. Ah, so this is her special mechanic, I guess. To retain her youth and power, the Dark Elf Crown Helebron must cover the lands of her enemies, enslaving and using them for sport during death night. A festival of murder which renews Helebron and Harganef's power. Luck shall stay. So as long as you have enough slaves to sacrifice, you can keep your buffs, as you can see here. And I guess if you don't have slaves or don't want to sacrifice, you get debuffed. Minus leadership, minus public order, minus tax. So you don't want that. Again, we are going to go... Now we're gonna go all the way. We can't attack this turn. But once again, it's pointless to declare war until you can actually attack uh, on that very turn. These are the regiments of renown, in case you're wondering. But you need to you need to get to a certain level with the general, so you could uh, recruit them. So now we research that technology, we have uh, cheaper basic units. The next thing we should get... Speed for the basic units. Experience when you recruit them and extra leadership. I'm not gonna go with this for the time being because I'm not gonna be do a lot of... Uh, raiding. And I won't use harpies or black arcs for the time being. This one benefits my uh, my cities. But for now, uh, we should do this and then we'll see. I don't need any buffs for my units for the time being. I can manage with what I have. Declare war. They have no allies. Let's go. Always death night. Do your worst. Let's do it. Uh, let's do it manually, and then I will uh, end the episode there, so I don't leave it on a cliffhanger. Well, the metric resolves in this game are either really OP or really unfair. It depends on a couple of factors. So we're not gonna use a lot of strategy here. 
I'm gonna use archers up front with Hellebron and our melee specialist, the Death Hag. And we're gonna put the the bulk of our spearmen behind. This will be group one. And the more specialized units will be group two. Just because I'm too lazy to micromanage more than that. Thankfully they will come to us. Attack the naked ladies! Hellebron. Hellebron can charge a turn, you can charge too. In and you can go to there to charge afterwards. Again, we're probably not gonna kill more than half of them because they run away. Because they're basic units and they don't have... Be their leadership is not that high. If you're wondering what this purple bar here is, it's uh, another Dark Elf special mechanic. If you kill a certain number of enemies during battle, aka you fill that bar, then uh, all your surviving... Uh, all your uh, surviving units will get a big buff to attack and a few other things I think. Anyway, this is done. Easy peasy. And battle. Oh, I actually killed more than half this time. And once again the Sisters of Slaughter have the most kills. We honor you, Kay. And we lost 19 people. We're gonna Hi. occupy. I kind of I kind of always occupy when I play this game unless I really really need money. It uh, it's a lot less hassle when you have to manage the public uh, order afterwards. So we actually have a conscription hall here which I will actually upgrade to level 2 and then delete one delete this one here and make a more useful building. Let us uh, put some skill points before I go. Since I'm gonna keep her in the army for now, I'm gonna give her some replenished troops. And for the crone, we are we are going to give her. Sorry, we're going to give her the dance of death, which gives her plus melee defense and plus melee attack and then we're gonna probably put a few more points in her attack and charge and things like that anyway um, I'm gonna end the episode here I know I haven't played a lot I haven't done much in this uh, video but hopefully it has been a decent introduction to this series and don't forget, if you want to see more, please leave a like and maybe subscribe to the channel. And if you have any suggestions or thoughts, do not hesitate in writing them in the comments below. But for now, I have been GDN, and I will see you next time. The Emperor Protects. <laughs>